Hey everybody, it's Jen Hatmaker here. Welcome to the For the Love podcast. I'm so happy to be your host and I'm absolutely thrilled you are here today of all days and you're going to be too because right now we are in a series called For the Love of the Elephant in the Room. Uh, we the, the amount of time we workshop this title because what we wanted you to know when you saw the name of the series is that it, we are talking here about things that have either historically and or currently make us uncomfortable. Uh, maybe some more than others. We are talking about race and racism. We're talking about menopause, grief, just to name a few. Um, things that are difficult to talk about, that are challenging to talk about, but guess what? We are not holding back here. I think you know this show and you certainly know me enough to know that when something is hard, I tend to steer into the curve. This needs to be talked about. Um, and we hope that you take our word for it, that this series is going to give us a lot to think about and it's worth our time and it's even worth our discomfort. Um, so I know for me, there were just some things that we simply did not talk about growing up. Um, Either it was completely invisible and, and neglected and sort of left out of the conversation, or when it, when, when it did find its way into discourse, it was with disdain, it was with judgment, even hatred. And so what now? Like I, you know, I asked myself, I've been handed whatever influence I have, whatever this is, it's what I have. It's what I have to spend. Um, it's what I have to use and it's what I have to offer. So hence this series. So let's dive in to what we're chatting about today in this series. We're talking about the LGBT, LGBTQ plus community. Now, you know my history here. Um, and, and here's what I want you to know. Our, our brother's and sisters and siblings and friends in this community, they need us to tune in here. Um, they need us to listen. They need us to learn. And they need us. They need us to be absolutely unequivocal, fierce allies for them. Um, uh, you know that I have done a lot of personal work around this, just in my in my own life, in my own family. You know that, you know, obviously that my daughter Sydney is gay. And, you know, we've had her on the show here um, when she got to tell her story in her own words. She is my beloved. And I love this about her. I love that she is queer. I love this, that this is how she is made. It's made her special in the world. I wouldn't change one molecule of her. She's my beloved. Um and I owe it to Sydney and I owe it to all the Sydneys to continue to talk about something that has historically brought so much trauma and so much rejection. Um, but things are changing. They are. They're changing in real time as we are watching. And oh, you guys, today is so good. It is so good that I could scream. You know who's going to lead us in today's conversation? A true trailblazer, true, a true pioneer. Um, I cannot wait to introduce you all to Celeste Lacine. Now, if you don't know, Celeste is one of the founders of the Trevor Project. And if that is also new to you, the Trevor Project is a uh, at, the, at, its, at its conception, an unprecedented, incredible lifeline for young people who identify as LGBTQ plus or questioning. Um, what they, they provide a ton of things, but kind of central to their work is they provide a free helpline and all the resources wrapped around it to show young people in the queer community they are loved, they are needed in this world, they are supported, this life that's worth living, um, it is truly an organization that needs to be shouted about from every rooftop. And Celeste was one of the 
the brave organizers that made this possible. So we are talking all about that. Celeste's journey through life as a queer person, their new venture, um, what they see in the world right now, what we can learn, what we need to be paying attention to, um, the Future Perfect program, which we'll discuss. And it is, I loved every word of my conversation today with Celeste. They are... (laughs) I know I'm saying this a lot lately, so I you're not allowed to imagine that at this point it's hyperbole. But I know a lot of you listen to the sh- to the show. You listen to it just in your, you know, AirPods. But I want you to know that we also video record every single interview and we upload it over on my YouTube channel. And this is a good one to watch because Celeste is wonderful. Um, everything, body language facial expressions, this real magnetic electric smile. Celeste is just genuine to their core. And I knew that right away. And this is a beautiful conversation. It is challenging and is important. And so I'm hoping this is one that you're going to share, that you're going to listen to more than once, that you're going to send to the people around you that you are in conversation with, that you are in dialogue with. Um, And so Lucky me. I am so pleased to share this conversation with you with the absolutely wonderful Celeste Lassine. Celeste, I'm really honored and I'm thrilled to have you on the show today. And I have been watching you for a long time and your work is so meaningful. So thank you for saying yes to this little space um, and coming into my community. Uh, we're so thankful. Well, you know, I, I really said this before, but I'll say it again, which is that we're doing the same work, which is really yeah. just, we're just spreading the love. Yeah. Right. Spreading the love and making it as visible and voluble as we can possibly make it in this world. You know, it's in a world right now that feels so complicated and it feels um, so difficult and challenging. It's a pretty simple solution. I mean, mm-hmm. love is not complicated. It, mm-hmm. it is, it's genuinely powerful. It does change lives. It can change cultures and communities. And I believe in it too. I'm going to go to the grave swinging for this one. I'm unwilling to imagine a lesser alternative. And so, okay, before you and I kind of get in here to all of this incredible conversation, I've already told my listeners a little bit about you and who you are, but would you mind um, just for, just for everyone who's new to you, can you, um, can you sort of high level for us who you are and what it is you do and a little bit of just kind of the, the arc, the overall arc of your story? Sure. Um, How much time we have. Yeah, Um, right. You know, I really consider myself a storyteller. That's Mm. really what I am. And I work in many different fields. And, you know, for me, the real the story really began um, about 30 years ago. I was uh, an actor and a writer and I would create these solo shows and then do them off Broadway and then travel Mm. around the United States doing them in little theaters. And and I did a show called word of mouth. Um, And in that show, there was a small story of a boy, a 13 year old boy named Trevor, which was really my story of Mm. what happened to me when I was a a young person. Mm -hmm. And I was inspired to write the story of Trevor uh, because I had heard on the radio that, you know, homosexuality was uh, responsible um, for so much suicide and, you know, three to four times more likely homosexuals, you know, gay and lesbian young people were um, in terms of attempting suicide. And I just thought that that was crazy. I just thought it was insane that nobody was paying attention to it. Mm. So I talked to all of my friends, I looked in my old journals, and I wrote this story, and I performed it on stage. It then was made into a a short film Mm. uh, directed by Peggy Reisky and produced by Randy Stone, and we, it won an Academy Award, which was like such a huge shock Mm. to me. Mm -hmm. 
um, <laughs> to all of us. Yes. Um, and, but the moment was right for that story to go out into the world. And when uh, two years later, when we made arrangements with HBO to put it on television, we thought it would be a good idea to put a telephone number at the end of the film yeah. so that young people who identified with the character of Trevor would call, um, have some place to call. And there was no suicide prevention lifeline specifically for gay and lesbian young people. So we created it. Randy, Peggy, mm -hmm. and I created the Trevor Project in three months. And on the wow. first night that the film was aired on HBO, uh, 1,500, over 1,500 young people called the line. Wow, wow. Which, was, which we couldn't handle. No. Uh, but it was enough of an indication that the need was out there. And really, that began for me an understanding of how powerful stories can be. Hmm. That, that 10 minute story that I told on stage, which was made into a 16 minute film, hmm. was the catalyst for uh, such a huge change, not only in the lives of these individual young people who were able to have their lives saved by that story, That's but right. in the culture, it sort of changed the idea that I think before that film, there really was no idea that young people or that what people weren't talking about the fact that young people knew who they were. Right? What year was this? So we can like pin this on the timeline. Well, the, the film won the Academy Award in 1995. Yeah. And yeah. So, you know, and in 1998, mm -hmm. uh, when the Trevor Project was started, Ellen DeGeneres had just come out. That's right. She did the wraparound presentation for the yeah. film on HBO. So mm. we knew it was going to be a huge deal. But sure. only in those three years, the change had happened. Huh. People were willing to listen to the fact that they were willing to believe, or some of us, you know, we were willing to believe in, the, in our own experience that we mm. knew that we were, we knew who we were when we were young. Of course. And now when I look at the young people today and I see that, you know, young trans kids as young as like three and four years old know who they are and people believe them. Yeah. This seems to me like such a huge miracle of a <laughs> shift that could happen in 25 years that I, I, I just, we don't even remember a time when mm -hmm. young people didn't know who they were. Yeah. Mm. I remember that. I remember that section of time um, when it was such a lightning rod and it was unfamiliar. And of course, at that point, there was virtually no representation anywhere. So we didn't have any common language. We didn't have even any of our leaders sort of leading the way and um, setting a wide table for the whole community and, and showing us what a healthy perspective here looks like it you were a pioneer at a really important time and I just cannot help it I'm just I'm just spiritual enough to just believe that that was ordained and meant to be that at that time when you were really fighting an uphill battle and you were kind of a lone voice in the wilderness with just a handful of people with you that your your level of tenacity and courage was required and not a lot of people would have done it or could have done it i think that you're special and you're gifted for the task you know, it was also anger. It was also, yeah. anger. you know, at the time, you know, I was living in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I was living through the AIDS crisis That's and I was right. watching my friends die. Yeah. People all around me in the entertainment industry and just people I knew, everyone was dying. Mm -hmm. And it seemed insane to me that there was this whole generation of, of, gay men who were dying. And then there was this other generation coming up who were opting for suicide yeah. and nobody was paying attention to what were two epidemics really. Mm. Um, and I, it just, it made me a little crazy. Mm. And I thought the only thing that I could do was to be honest about my own story. And I want to talk to you about that if, if you're comfortable with it, because I'd like to go back a little bit before you, um, you know, be, became such a, a, a practitioner and an activist um, inside this, this level of societal change. Um, because, I mean, as, 
as clearly known and as you have described, it, it, even the acknowledgement, much less the validation, much less the the cherishing of the LGBTQ community was just not, this was, wasn't where we were. It wasn't commonly accepted. This wasn't what we saw. It wasn't what we heard. And so I, I wonder if you'd be willing to talk a little bit about your personal experience as a young LGBTQ person at that time. It's not the same as the kids who are coming out and proud right now in sixth grade. Right. Um, and, and how that impacted you. And I, I wonder if you can walk us through what it felt like for you internally and what the like battle in your head was and where were you turning for support or mentorship or even like a role model? Um, because it was, I, I, I just, I'm trying to imagine the, the courage that it took to kind of survive that landscape is kind of otherworldly. And I honor it. Well, you know, it was very much of this world, I have to say. And mm. it, it, it was it was tough, you know, and I think it was tough for everybody who grew up in a society and that basically wanted to you to disappear or wanted you dead or just not mm. visible. Um, and and also to be somebody like me who really wanted to be visible. I wanted to. Sure. You're I meant for the stage. I just wanted to share my gifts with. The yes. World. I had to keep a part of me um, on, on the on the down low, right? Mm. But even as a young person, I think when I became aware of what queerness was in the way that I came to understand it, I came to understand it at a time when I, with it came the understanding that it was considered a crime, yeah, also a mental disease, mm. and it was a sin. And that's what I grew up with. Yeah. And I have to say that though I didn't mm -hmm. go around telling people it, I thought it was crazy because yeah. they were talking about the way that I loved. Yeah. They were talking about the way that I naturally loved the world and, right. and other people. And it was so in inextricably a part of who I was mm -hmm. that I thought, okay, either I'm, really crazy yeah. or the, or the whole world is nuts. That's and right. which is not to say that I escaped, you know, the, the trauma of, you know, not being accepted and living my life invisibly and, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that people wanted me disappeared or dead. Like that's just that you just have to figure out how to live with that. But something deep inside me told me that this was crazy mm -hmm. and that, and what I came to later understand was that I, I was living in the future hmm. and a future that hadn't yet arrived. Yeah. And I think one of the things that's helped me so much in my life is to be able to reach back to a younger generation and understand that they now are living in a future that hasn't yet arrived. Hmm. And that they're uncomfortable in the world they live in hmm especially this, this current generation of, of young queer people, they, like, they're living in a world that, that just hasn't arrived yet. Mm -hmm. and, they can, they, and so this world that they're living in feels a little like not quite a right, good fit, you mm -hmm. know? And there's so much work to be done. But when I look at them, I think to myself, never in a million years could I have imagined those young people out and proud and being so connected to one another, being connected to their history also right. mm -hmm. as queer people, to understand that people came before them. That's a brand new thing uh, that I think this generation You're right. has, that no other generation has had of queer people have, have really had at hand, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you know, not to stray too far from my own experience, but my own experience has helped me live the pain and difficulty I experienced as a marginalized person, an invisibilized person, and, and a despised person, quite frankly, mm -hmm. has helped me align myself with the people who are in our culture, marginalized and despised and made invisible. Of course. And that's, 
I know that that is where my superpower is in that, in those parts that the world tried to make invisible. And so I know that the people who are being made invisible and despised, they're our collective superpower, right? Like that's right. And it's, it's, and it's love that's going to bring them in Mm -hmm. and it's love. That's going to bring those parts of myself out. Mm -hmm. Right. So my job is to tell stories and to help other people tell those stories that might be a little too difficult to tell. I certainly wasn't, I never really associated myself with the character of Trevor when I first wrote it. And when we started the Trevor project, because I didn't want people to associate the character with me. I wanted them to associate the character of Trevor with themselves so that they would see in that story, Mm. their own experience, not mine. And now so much time has gone by. Nobody even knows that the Trevor project, which is the, you know, the largest suicide prevention and crisis intervention for LGBT and questioning young people was started not by a sad story of a boy Mm. named Trevor who was Mm. now dead, Mm. But it was in fact started because of a story of a fabulous young queer who survived. That's good. And that's, yeah. that's really important. It is, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a triumph story. It's a victory story. And it changed the story of queer youth in this country. And, you know, hopefully further. Yeah. By saying that when you think of queer youth, you don't have to necessarily think suicide. Mm -hmm. You can think about Trevor and you can think that there's an alternative to suicide, right? Which is that there's somebody on the end of that telephone line or somebody on the other side of that chat or somebody to receive your text who is going to see you through this difficult moment. The new year is always such a good time to find the reset button, to intentionally explore changes we want to make, or to look at some different levers we can pull to service better. Finances can occupy one of those categories for a ton of us. In my experience, this can start with some of the smallest things, like your checking account, for example. Chime is your solution here. They are an award-winning app and debit card with no overdraft fees, no foreign transaction fees, monthly fees, or service fees. And so like, not only that, but they make it so easy and convenient for other things too. Like they have more than 60,000 fee-free in-network ATMs at locations like most Walgreens, 7-Eleven, CVS. So you can access your money when you need it, where you need it for free. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime, fee fee for you and no cash out fees for them. So honestly, make your first good decision of the new year and join more than 10 million people using Chime. Sign up takes about two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. So you can get started at chime.com slash for the love, chime.com slash for the love. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank NA, members FDIC, get fee-free transactions at any Money Pass ATM in a 7-Eleven location and at any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Otherwise, out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Sometimes pay anyone instant transfers can be delayed. The recipient must be a valid debit card or be a Chime member to claim funds. We're currently in a series called For the Love of the Elephant in the Room, and I am so inspired that we are walking into the new year by talking about hard things and sometimes even controversial things, because this is where we can find so much value and growth. Sometimes an elephant in the room for us girls even looks like talking about what we are wearing underneath our clothes. And so Third Love is obviously a brand I love in this category. The minute I put on one of their bras and discovered that not all bras have to feel terrible, I literally never looked back. Third Love also has a fitting room quiz. It's kind of like a personal shopper, but better. So it focuses on size, breast shape, 
current fit issues and your personal style to find like bras and underwear that are perfect for you. Um, and they know that comfort and fit are essential to you feeling your best. And so Third Love also knows that embracing healthy movement and being active is a big part of doing right by ourselves, which is why they designed their active line, which includes the kinetic sports bra to support you literally every step of the way. This sports bra is going to be your new best friend in 2022 because it's so incredibly comfortable, but also wildly supportive. It's made for everything from like uh, living room dance parties to walks with friends to like high intensity workouts. It runs the gamut. Um, and it comes in 22 sizes, which is all part of Third Love's incredible inclusive sizing program, um, which was developed using real women's measurements. Y'all promise feeling is believing. So upgrade to everyday pieces that love your body as much as you do. So right now, you guys, you can get 20% off your whole first order at thirdlove.com slash for the love. Great deal. So it's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash for the love. I'd love to hear you talk more about the Trevor project at this point. And so now, of course, this has developed into a, a, a national known organization um, and the best of its kind. Can you talk more about what it is that you do? What does the, what, what is the project? What does it look like? What are the, the tendrils of it? What are the resources inside of it? Um, and just what's been your experience to watch that baby grow up into a, a truly a, a lifeline for m- millions. Is that okay to say millions yeah, of people? Yeah, I would I would say so. And I, I would start by saying it's such a miracle. It's such a miracle, really. Mm -hmm. And by miracle, I don't mean it just like poof happened. I mean that it's, it was the, it was the effect of so many causes that people made because the time was right to change that story in the world about queer youth. It was like so many people contributed to that changing of that story. So, you know, I am really cognizant of that. And I just want to start by, you know, before we talk about all the services and everything to just say, when I travel around the country and a young person or a person who is 35 years old or comes up to me and says, thank you. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't called that telephone line, if I hadn't made that move to send that text or that chat. Mm -hmm. When you see a person standing in front of you who would not have, would not be here if it had not been for that. So powerful. You just think like, okay, you you Mm -hmm. know, you, you, you're, I'm good. That's I'm, right. I'm good. You're good. That's like right. we, got, we both got through this. That's it. Now let's see what else we can do in terms of keeping everybody else safe, seen, and celebrated. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to start with that because, yeah. you know, the the organization is so beautifully run. Um, you know, it's just you know, Amit Paley, who has been the CEO of the uh, Trevor Project has done such a remarkable job in the past, you know, five years of leading the organization into this new phase that it's in. And, you know, one of the things I'm really proud of, of the, in the past few years is that Trevor has become also the leading voice in terms of research and mm. that they're able to have really established this themselves as um you know, a reliable source of research about that's LGBT. new frontier, right? I mean, you're plowing up new ground. Yeah, I think that there were smaller studies and, mm-hmm. you know, but they've really done it every year now for the past mm-hmm. five years. And their their findings are the, you know, the, the leading information about LGBT youth. And it, and it's yeah. right that it's that they are that right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and the services that they provide, of course, the lifeline has been around for 23 years. And that is somebody on the end, other end of a telephone line, taking your call, listening yeah. to you. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a miraculous thing. I always say that listening is the secret language of love. 
And the Trevor Project is in the love business, basically, because what they do is those counselors, you know, there are 750 volunteers around the country who answer the uh, chats, who are on chats with young people all the time, who answer the texts and who answer the telephones. And, you know, I was on the board of the Trevor Project raising money and, you know, guiding the organization for 15 years. And then I decided that it was time for me to make some room for other people Mm. and who were better at raising money. Sure. And, and uh, and also the the organization was in a place where it was like, okay, you're 15. Absolutely. Yes. Now you have to get get some fresh blood in here. Yeah. (laughs) And um, so, but I start, I still wanted to be involved with the Trevor project. So I became a lifeline counselor and I did that for, Hmm. I did that for five years and that was really an incredible education because up until then, I didn't really, really understand what the Trevor project did. I understood. Uh, Interesting. I understood it in theory, but I didn't understand what it felt like to be talking to a young person who was in crisis. Wow. And it, and it really changed my life. It really changed the direction of my life. Mm-hmm. And after that five years of working as a lifeline counselor, I, I started to hear something that I'd never heard before. Mm-hmm. And that, that was with this current generation of young people that they were doing, that many of them were doing really well, that they were beginning to have the support of one another. Yeah. I began to see what it looked like for young people to have the love of a parent oh. or a teacher or a guidance counselor, sure. to have the, to have mentors, to have the internet and a community that they could drop into. And to see themselves on television and in movies and in commercials. And that matters. Yeah. And though there were still, there is still, as we know, a crisis in terms of young people and their suicidal ideation and, yeah. and just the difficulty of being an adolescent, yeah. I began to see something that I'd never seen before with these young people, a social justice component that I'd never seen. Yeah. Kind of confidence in themselves that I thought yes. okay, is new. Yeah. And I decided that I was going to go and travel around the country and go into schools and, and listen to them in, in, Mm. in GSAs and LGBT centers and um, to see if it was happening every place, not Uh. just, you know, fancy cities and and blue States, but if it was happening in, you know, Arkansas and Alabama and Indiana and I called my dear friend who was 30 years younger than I was. Okay. I still is 30 years younger. 30 years younger. <laughs> yes. uh, Ryan Amador. He's a remarkably talented singer songwriter. Okay. And I said, come with me and let's see if we can see if this is happening everywhere. See if we can document this somehow. Yeah. And, and so we, started traveling around. We went to places like South Carolina and Arkansas, Illinois, Washington state, California, going into high school, staying there for a week and Mm. doing these true storytelling, getting them to tell their stories and also getting these young people to write songs about their experience. And it was so amazing what I learned And one of the things that I learned was there is a revolution happening. That's right. And they are so lit with this sense of themselves and their authenticity that, you know, if you dare yourself to be around it, you yourself will be changed. That's right. That's how it works on their phones. They weren't all, you know, bored and apathetic and, you know, they were deeply engaged. Sure. And excited 
about what was happening in their world. And of course, you know, trepidatious about the state of the world as we mm-hmm. all are, but they weren't defeated in a way no. that, I, um, that I had seen so many young queer people have been in the past. You know, they mm-hmm. were getting the support and the love. And because of that, they were just more themselves. Of course. Um, so we did that for three years. We traveled around the country, um, really gathering information, giving them the space and the encouragement to kind of beat a path from their insides to the outside world through storytelling mm-hmm. and songwriting. And it, it just, it, it blew us away. And then COVID happened yeah. and we moved everything online. Mm. We called ourselves the Future Perfect Project. Yeah. Because of this idea that I had about being yes. when I was 15, you know, yeah. I was living in a future that hadn't arrived. They're living in the future that hasn't arrived. And it's a better future for That's us right. all. For us yes, all. undoubtedly. So we moved everything online during COVID. And suddenly we were meeting with young people in their bedrooms two, three times a week, instead of visiting them once a year and never seeing them again, we began to have a group of young people that we met with and gave them the space and the encouragement to create art. Uh, We introduced them to other queer artists. We we had deep dive discussions about things that were going on in the world for the past year and a half. Sure. And we also began to make content, allowing them to express themselves um, through animations, through uh, albums that we released of their original songs, um, you know, through Instagram, we just became the means by which they could amplify their stories and their voices mm-hmm. and kind of turn the world on to the, what we had been seeing for the past few years. Yes. And let people know like, wow, this is a, this is a new thing that's happening. Yeah. And attention must be paid. It must. And it will be. I love this for a million reasons. Um, Here's the first one is I like how you said um, this is actually good for all of us. Um, This you are right, because queer people are more than just queer. They're brilliant artists, they're innovative thinkers, they're incredible partners and spouses and parents, and they have brilliance to unleash on the world. And so for me to hear you able to highlight all of who they are, not just this one piece of them, you know, that is, of course, central and precious and valuable and in need of your work, but all of them, like, and here's the song they wrote, right. And here's the poem they wrote. And like, here are these, this young generation of creatives rising up and we're all going to be better for it. Everyone. I mean, that rising tide is going to lift every boat in this Harbor. Yes. And we know that when LGBT youth are safe, seen and celebrated, everybody does well. Of course. And everybody across the board does well. Everyone else is safe, seen, and celebrated. That's right. You know, I think one of the things we've heard again and again from the young people we work with is that with all due respect to people like myself, um, they are tired of trauma drama. Like, I know what you're saying right now. Can you parse that out? Because, you know, my 21 year old daughter is queer and she has explained this to me Um, in because, you know, as you know, she's having none of it. They're 21. They're who they are. They have this baked in community. It is they are they are beautifully free in their lives. And so she has explained this to me. And I would love to hear you talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, I did this event recently at an arts organization and I, they asked me to speak about the work that I'm doing with the Future Perfect Project. And um, I said, okay, that's great, but let's bring the young people and have them tell you what they see and what they hear. So, you know, they came and, you know, they were amazing as, you know, given the stage. Of course. they They were asked, what do you want to see in the arts? Like, what are you not seeing about your lives? And like, how do you want yourself to be represented? And they all said, 
again, leaned forward and looked at me and said, with all due respect to your past, we're to, we want to see ourselves represented in Normal. different ways, like yeah. as, as a whole person. Yeah, and just in life. And not defined by this right. identity as a trauma, but identified yes. as a person who yes. is authentically themselves, yep. having fun, enjoying their life. And yes, some difficulties, but yeah not defined by those difficulties. Absolutely. I did not understand. And now that I know that I see that now that I have, my daughter has explained how that feels to always, um, when you are represented in a movie, which the greater community often looks at as a victory, it's still that same story of something's wrong with this kid. They're going to experience a lot of rejection and trauma. And then in the end, um, you know, yay for gay. Um, and so that's tired, like that's yeah. tired and there's more to it than that. And also I think, you know, what we can do is to create enough room for all the stories to be told yeah. so that it's not like we're, and we're not edging out those stories of trauma, but that they can actually fill in the, the, the puzzle piece of what it looks like all over the place like of course in different communities in different yep. you know, uh, different experiences of being queer different sure places, it's different not a monolith places. yeah and but we have to create enough room so that there every story can that's be right told. Many that's of them what it is possible. all right where are my uh work from homers my etsy shop stars and small business owners whatever the case no matter if you are mailing invoices, shipping orders, or just sending out a bunch of packages on repeat. Here's what I want to tell you. Stamps.com will make your life easier by a factor of like 1 million. Um, they've been around for more than 20 years, you guys. They've been indispensable for over a million businesses already. I have been using Stamps.com, my whole team has, um, for years now. Um, and here's why. They just make it easier than you ever thought possible to mail and ship anything right from your laptop or computer. You save time and money because stamps.com gives you access to hugely discounted rates, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. And with their rate advisor tool, you can compare shipping rates and timelines to easily find the very best option. So when your mail or your packages are ready, you just schedule a pickup or you can drop them off. It's easy as that. No waiting in lines or navigating any of that nonsense. So just go ahead and save time and money this year with stamps.com. You can sign up for, with a promo code for the love for a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage and a digital scale. There are no long-term commitments or contracts. So just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter the code for the love. It's interesting when I hear you talk, Celeste, because, and you kind of mentioned this earlier, you sort of touched on this, but I hear really similar responses and reactions and, and, and hopes like from other marginalized communities, like my, my friends in the, in the black community, my friends of color are saying kind of the same thing. Like we're a little bit sick of black trauma. How about a little black joy? How about a little black brilliance, you know? Um, and so I look forward to that being the next chapter, uh, a more well-rounded world um, where these are not such the North Star identifying elements of a, a person's life or of an entire community um, that we get to move on to the goods, you know, we get to move on to why we all exist on this earth, which is to make it more beautiful. And to love one another well. And I think it's one of the things that we touched on before, which is, I think it's one of the reasons why people never ask who was Trevor. Ah, interesting. They're terrified that they're going to hear <laughs> a traumatic story of a kid who died, right? Of course, just, sure. Right? They're just terrified. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Listen, we, we need to bring Trevor back then. Like we right here. <laughs> think of Trevor's just do. Um, I want to also affirm as we start to wrap it up that, um, that change is happening and it is happening fast and it is happening rapidly. I mean, I can just tell you, this is anecdotal, of course, but it's just out of my own family where I have a 21 year old. So she's a senior in college. 
And, and to your point, as you um, took the project in the road and went to more um, remote locations and places in the deep South and red States, well, we live in Texas and we are in now granted we're Austin adjacent. So we're a little blue County um, here, here in the state, but we, my family lives just South of it in a suburb that is decidedly conservative and has been forever for just ever the deepest roots um, of kind of honestly stereotypical Texas as kind of country cowboy, kind of country cowboy redneck. Um, and so what do I do? I put my queer and my black kids in the school district. But what I can tell you um, that even from the experience of my daughter, Sydney, who's four years away from it, and then I have two still in, I've got a senior and I have a sophomore in that time frame. in the last four years, it's changed. It has changed my, my younger kids, peers and, and classmates are living in more freedom than my daughter just four years ago. They're at prom together They're And all these like country cowboy boys are just like, that's just their friends. It's just their friends. It's, they think we're boring for, with all this drama, like, This is just who they all are. Everybody get over, like, let's move on to something. And so it's exciting to watch. And I I always tell our young people is, um, you know, just like I could not imagine this current generation of young people in my wildest dreams. I bet. There's something coming that, that they cannot imagine that is so beyond their imagination. Mm. And so... Uh, inspiring, really. Yeah. About what's possible with the human species, right? And what I love about mm. queer youth is that it is their love that yeah. is leading them to this new thing. That's right. It, it, it's it's the, it's really their love for one another. Their that's love right. for themselves. That's actually creating the change. That's good. That um, it may be fueled by a little bit of fury. It may be fueled by a little bit of trauma, but it is a love. It is a love led space. And so I, I just want to end with two things or, okay. I just want to in, 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 introduce two ideas. Okay. Let's One hear it. Is, um, there, we did a workshop and we had, we, as we often do with the future perfect project. And we had young people write a letter to the young people of the future. Mm. And one of the participants wrote this line, your freedom was our invention. Your happiness was our intention. You can see- I have goosebumps, I have chills. I I made a little um, needle- A little cross stitch, yes. (laughs) So good, right? Oh, so good. And the other thing I want to just end with is um, this little thing here. Hold on one second. I just got to grab it. Mm -hmm. So we asked them to give us a recipe for evolution. Like how Mm -hmm. does the world evolve? Sure. And we put them into groups and, you know, we had groups of like five or six of them. And then they came back with their recipe. And this was one of the groups. This is the recipe for evolution, a willingness to change. Realize your needs and tend to them. Admit you can't do it alone. Ask for help. Be willing to start over. And the last one, journey to self-love. These sound like the adults in the room. Like. Just not only hand them the mic. Lead on. (laughs) <laughs> like exactly. let us just follow you you guys what little we'll step aside and really it's about giving them the space mm. and the, and the encouragement and also really believing in them yeah. and if i were to say one thing which is really uh, which i really i said earlier which is to listen to these young people and not to listen for what you expect them to say but to really give them the opportunity to speak from the, from their heart. Mm. Right. And, and yeah. listen with your, and listen with your love ears. Yes. With and your hear, love ears. And then you're going to hear the future. You'll hear what, hear what the future sounds like. It's exciting. 
and they're standing on your shoulders, Celeste. And I know you know that. What that is. I was wondering what that was on my shoulders. <laughs> it's heavy. It's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> I thought they were wings. I thought they were wings. Yeah. I love talking to you. I love what you're doing in the world. And yeah. I love what you're doing with your family. Thank you. Um, I can't wait to meet you someday in real time. Me too. In real space. And that's Me too. Happen. When the world comes back. I can't yeah, wait. And, and I want, want us to come. If you ever want us to come to um to your to your school or your town, okay. Um, just let me know. Thank you. And let me just say reciprocally, I just in every way want to support your work to amplify your voice. I want to amplify your work. I want to hold that banner high so that more kids know where to go when they need you. Um, and they can move into their own spaces of freedom. And so I'm here too. So just outside of Austin, just South in the redneck zone, you know where to find me. I'm going to come. Thank you for being on the show, Celeste. I'm honored and delighted to know you. And so I make people my friends when I want to, and that's my prerogative. And I want you to know that I'm making you my friend. I already have your cell number. It's in our correspondence. You You can't get away. (laughs) Nice try. (laughs) cheering you on cheering you on in every way bye you too thank you special right like special encouraging like loving joyful i um feel grateful today that i got to have this conversation um that i got to sit across from celeste and learn from them and um, honor their work. I mean, we're spanning decades at this point. So whatever it is that we see in terms of progress right now in the world was not the case at the beginning of Celeste's story. And so, I mean, just what a, what a champion. Okay. Um, I will, if you go to jenhatmaker.com under the podcast tab, I will have this entire episode like queued up for you. I'll have the show notes and then probably more importantly, I'll have everything Celeste related, um, social media handles, obviously the front door to the Trevor project, um, the future perfect program, everything, um, as this is an incredible resource. So I really want you, I want this on your radar. And I want you to have spent a little bit of time at least perusing what it is that Celeste does in the world so that you can have it in your hip pocket as your own personal resource, either for yourself, for somebody that you love, for your community, all of it. Um, Thank you for listening and for staying engaged. Thank you for um, enduring your own discomfort in this series, wherever it may rise for you, Um, and just being committed to listening. And to being a learner, that that's a big deal and it matters. And um, we're going to keep bringing it to you in this incredible series. So guys, don't miss next week. Come on back. We're like, we're, we're steering in to the curve, to these conversations that are sometimes hard, but matter immensely. So you guys will see you next week. <laughs>